Hi everyone and welcome to the next edition of Like, Share, Follow. And this week I have the amazing Angela Doust who is a digital people specialist at Good Start Early Learning. And um, Angela started USC learning about social media with me. She was in the very first group of students to complete the social media minor. So that was four courses over two semesters. And um, she was good in the sense that she uh, actually trusted me because it was a wild ride that first year. And not only that, uh, Angela also came with me to Hong Kong when we went on a social media study tour over there. So welcome, Angela. It's really great to see you again. It's been a while. So tell me, what have you been doing since I last saw you? Yeah, thanks for having me, Karen. It's really good to see you too. Um, well, Obviously, I finished university um, and then after I graduated, I was lucky enough to get a, get a role as a marketing assistant at Good Start Early Learning. So in that role, I was doing traditional marketing work um, on Facebook, writing content plans for our centres to use on social media, as well as um, budget tracking and invoice tracking. And then the company went through a restructure. Um, and my current role came up um, and I thought it was a good opportunity for me because I am really quite tech focused and interested in the digital world. Um, and I was successful for the position. So and now- Good start early learning. So tell me a bit more about the company. What, what do they actually do? Yeah, so it's a charitable social enterprise. Uh, they provide early learning services across the nation. So we have about 650 plus centres around Australia at the moment. So I work in the head office um, and I manage the digital people tools that our staff use to do their roles. So at the moment, I'm managing the internet platform and the staff Yammer platform. Excellent. And so tell me, the, when you studied social media, we, we were talking before that it, like the whole focus of, of our social media education was really all around the audience. And so can you see parallels between when you were doing social media and making it very audience focused to what you're doing now with say human centered design? Absolutely. Like this is human focused. My role as the people digital specialist is focusing on how people actually use the platforms. Um, and when I was studying my social media degree, I was focusing on how people actually relate to the, to the platforms and writing content that would actually engage with people. So I've kind of switched from content to the more technical side, but I'm still people focused. Absolutely. That's, that sounds really great. And um, so tell me, what has been the best piece of advice that you've been given throughout your career so far? Oh, this is an interesting question because every day I have a different answer. Um, <laughs> it's usually what I'm focusing on that day and what I think I need to improve on. Um, Quite interestingly, I had some really good advice early in my career before I even started university, which was to focus on your personal brand and what you want to present to the net to your office um, in how you present yourself, in how you speak and how you act. It's not, And I realised that it's not just about wearing a suit and tie in the office. It's, at, it's about your manners. It's about your behaviour. It's about listening to other people um, and, you know, using appropriate behaviour in the office. So I think that's a really good skill for people to focus on and to really figure out what is their personal brand when they go into the workplace. Absolutely. And even, not even just in the workplace, but even when they're online because it yeah, all definitely. adds to people's ideas about who, who you are and what you stand for. And so we, we covered a lot of that in our courses as well, um, just looking at how you're um, you know, presenting yourself online because I think some people think that, you know, you you can in, behave professionally in one way and then go somewhere yeah. else and behave in a different way, but everything you do online adds to your personal brand. So there, there's yeah. no really clear, um, you know, categories. Like every all your activity online adds to people's perception of you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and so tell me, so when you were clearly, like you, you went for this job after you graduated as in, in the first job that, at this particular company, and so you would have been competing with other graduates for the same sort of role. What do you think set you apart from the other graduates going for that role? 
I think, honestly, it's the hands-on experience I got in your course at USC. I don't want to sound like a salesperson, but it, it actually yeah. really was. I was um, able to clearly speak on the experience I had, you know, gained in your courses working with real life clients in my job interviews. And I was actually able to present to my interview person, you know, that I'd written content plans, that I'd studied um, Hootsuite and HubSpot and technical tools. So I, I knew what I was talking to. Yeah, excellent. That's it's good feedback. And I remember too, some like when you started to go for roles, um, you would sort of get in touch and and say um, like some of the feedback you were getting, and and that that was yeah. really because that helped me to go okay. Well, because it's I think sometimes what lets universities down is um, when and not all, but some they they're not they don't have a really strong relationship with with industry, and yeah. it's really important yeah. to understand what the industry's needs are. So then you can embed that in the course. But, of course, you know, we are a university. We're, we're much broader than that. And we do look at things like, you know, theory, theory and things like that. But I think it's so important to show that practical application of theory because it just adds, you know, so much more depth to your knowledge. Yeah, um, definitely. And speaking of depth of knowledge, so what um, sort of adding to what we've covered, what, what are some of the skills that you learned at university that have really helped you in the first role that you had when you left, but then even the role that you're, you're in now? So the first skills in my first role that helped me was really that creativity in content writing. So I would be called on to write a two week content plan in two days notice um, for a new product offering that we were launching. So having previously written content plans, I knew what I was doing. So I wasn't freaking out. I was able to sit down and calmly write something and do my research and be able to present something to my managers for them to use. Um, and then the other thing that I think was really important that I learned at university is group work skills. Um, and that was something that I left university really celebrating that I never needed to do another group project again because I hated them, absolutely hated them. But it really was one month into my first real job and I realised that, oh, my gosh, this is basically like group work. I'm going to have to respond to this situation in how I would have responded at university. So, you know, when you're working with a co-worker or working with a client, you really need to know how to communicate effectively, how to manage your time and also how to manage your stakeholders' expectations. And I think those are three real key skills that I learnt doing group work at uni. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, gr group work isn't fun for us either. No. <laughs> so, but it's, it's necessary, you know. Yeah. And, I mean, and you never get away from group work. I, oh. I think even no matter what job you're in, even when you are working um, individually, you still have to collaborate with people exactly. in some way unless you live in a cave and yep. you know you're writing a book but even then like when you sell that book you have to work with other people so um and what i found interesting with particularly with um i remember one of the courses that you did the transmedia storytelling course and you took that as an online student if i remember correctly and um in this group work in that and so i remember some of the student feedback from that course saying online students should never do group work and yes. so actually um um, we're doing group work now. Look, with the whole COVID situation, we've all had to do group work. And and um, particularly in, in my own role, like I, I'm working on projects with people from all around the world. Like we're, we're all online working. It's such a valuable and necessary skill nowadays. And, and what I really liked when you undertook that course was that, yes, it was challenging, but you still did it and you still embraced the, the actual challenge and and really were very, was very successful with it so yeah. that's that's great and tell me too what on the flip side of that what was something that you really needed in terms of skills and knowledge when you started working out in the field that you, the university did not provide to you it was really those technical skills um but once again, they are skills that you can learn in a short course or once you get into the job. So it's not a university has to teach you how to do these things. It's maybe yeah. the skills that you need to know that you'll need to learn. So for me, that was things like um, how to write a brief for graphic designers. I didn't know what a DL was. I didn't know what a what a flyer measurement or what GSM for cardstock was. Um, 
but I was quite lucky that when I started my first role, I had a marketing manager that took me under her wing and taught me the skill on how to write a brief and how to, you know, tell creatives what I actually want from something they're going to create for me. Um, but I think those are skills that a, uni a university student can learn from a short course as well and can also learn from doing internships and getting out into the field. Yeah, and and I mean now, like with um, with the social media offerings that we we have, there is so like there is a um, it's like a two hundred and eight hour internship where um, we're, we're doing a major. They're they're out working in an agency for it's the equivalent of twenty six full time working days. So um, they right. learn they learn a lot from that, and um, yeah, and 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 I guess too just those those details around um, you know briefing. In, in the book that's coming out in a couple of months we're talking about before, I've got sections in there on how to do that because, yeah, I recognise that it is an area that we probably need to work out more because, you know, it's one thing to create the stuff yourself but it's completely different to communicate it in a way and you've got to communicate it in a way that makes yeah. sense otherwise because if, if it's back and forth, those re iterations, um, they cost a fortune. So, <laughs> so you need to, like, get that brief right from the beginning. Um, and so tell me too, like in the last two weeks, what has been one of your favourite social media pieces of information or tools that you have discovered? Uh, that I have discovered. I haven't actually discovered that much on social media. Um, okay. I've just well, been related to your job. Like what's something new that you have yeah. found that you've been really excited about? Yeah. Um, I'm really excited about actually watching brands do, you know, good community management as a consumer. I love watching brands starting to speak, you know, on Facebook and speak on social media and actually enforce their community management rules. I think an example with that would be two, two weeks ago, I saw a post from the National Gallery of Australia and they were talking about women painters and they mm. got a bit of a nut comment about would you be talking about men pages this way and their community um, management person had actually wrote you know written down that you know yes we would and presented examples where they had previously done that and <laughs> then also posted the rules of their community under the the post so I thought it was I love you know, it. I loved it. <laughs> it was great it's really good to see um, brands and community management professionals actually getting that confidence to speak up um, and call out some bad behaviour on their pages because when I was in that traditional marketing role managing Facebook pages I, I you know I noticed that that was a stressor of other people than some people that were doing that type of role getting that type of um, stress and handling that community management focus yeah yeah and it, and it is like a, and I I think too I think it's changing where I think there was a time where you know, your job as a community manager was to just not cause any problems, you know, right. and, and I think now um, I think it, it's okay to be more human and it's okay yeah. to stand up as long as it's in a respectful way and as long as it's, um, you know, factual, like what your example, they actually had references and, and, and evidence to go, well, actually, and, um, and show that. And, I, you know, I think that's a really great approach to take rather than just trying to sort of be passive and keep the peace all the time. Um, so that's really good. And so tell me, what um, what advice would you give to students or emerging professionals about how they can succeed? Yeah, so realistically, it would be to listen and learn from the experienced um, and don't prejudge people. I really have learnt the most in my career so far from listening to my co-workers work and watching my leaders and noticing what they do in the work environment. I think it's very easy for us as, you know, younger digital natives to think that we know everything about the digital world. Um, and we know social media because we were, you know, we were born on social media, but our co-workers you know, they may have had actually 20 years experience in digital and 10 years experience in social media management. They tend to know more, like they've lived the experience, they've launched a website that's crashed, they've had a social media campaign fail. So they know, they tend to know what works and why. So I think really listen to your coworkers and listen to your leaders is a good skill to learn. Yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, and even even 
at whatever stage of your career, it, it's just listening and watching and not even just watching what people are doing, but taking into account what they're not doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that, that can actually help to increase your knowledge too. And um, so as a, as a final question, um, who do you like, share and follow? Yeah, so I always like my fellow grads work. I'm really proud to see what my friends are actually doing out in the world. Um, I share Black Lives Matter content um, and I follow the Digital Picnic for their best practice community management. They're a agency based down in Melbourne and I think they're doing some awesome work in the social and community management space. And I'd really encourage grads to follow them on Instagram and to absorb their practices. Excellent. Well, I'm, I'm actually going to do that myself. So yeah. great. So thank you so much, Angela. It's been really great chatting to you again. And um, congratulations. You, you're really fleshing out a really interesting career. So well done to you. And it's good Thanks, to see Sarah. how, um, you know, just how your knowledge of, of social media has led you in, you know, into different, different paths. Yeah, there's so many worlds you can take marketing and social media. Um, and I didn't realise when I graduated, but I'm really glad I am where I am now. Excellent. And do you have any final words for people watching? Um, oh, that's a... <laughs> bye. <laughs> no. That's fine. I, I, I want to say, I'm Phoebe Thomas, who is from Tourism Noosa. She was watching and she said, yes, group work skills for sure. Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's so important to um, to have those group work skills, those collaboration skills throughout all parts of your career. So we try and get you to develop them at university because you, you're gonna actually need them, so. Yeah, yeah, so you're doing group work for a reason. So sit tight yeah. and you will get through it. And to be honest, like, you know, it's not always gonna be fun. Um, every, every now and again, you'll crack it and get a great group who all wants to put in the same amount. But it, generally speaking, it's, it's always quite a challenge. But when you get to the end and you've finished the, what you were supposed to do, it's a really great achievement. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Angela. And um, next week we'll be talking to Janisha Chowdhury, who is a social media and content coordinator at Thrive Digital. So join me next week. And thanks again, Angela. Bye. Bye.